Hello everybody, this is um, DGM Radio. Today we want to speak about spiritual warfare. It says clearly in the book of Ephesians 6, Ephesians chapter 6, it says we should put on the old armor of God. The Ephesians, we are believers, so believers themselves have to be prepared for spiritual warfare. Sister Patiway, I have with me, I have Sister Patiway and I have um, Sister Genesis with me. Sister Patiway, could you please read um, the book of um, Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, please? Thank you, Pastor Peter. Um, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness, wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins, girt about with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shored with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewithal wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints you remember he said we should put on the whole armor of god and to fight spiritual warfare he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness against spiritual wickedness in high places in Revelation chapter 12, spoke said the devil took one third of the angels in heaven. The fallen cherubims, they are called principalities. While the fallen seraphims, they are called powers. While the fallen normal angels, they are called rulers of um, darkness. In, in the spiritual warfare, we have eight weapons. Eight weapons. Out of the eight weapons, five are defensive while three are offensive sister genesis could you read um could you first mention weapon one first belt of truth belt of truth if you read um the book of um john chapter 14 verse 17 it says the spirit of truth who is the holy spirit the belt of truth means the holy spirit for you to be able to fight spiritual warfare you need the holy the help of the holy spirit he is the belt of truth is the number one weapon for spiritual warfare sister genesis could you read um could, could you mention the second weapon the breastplate of righteousness breastplate of righteousness is very important for warfare breastplate of righteousness that means you have to be right with the lord that is what will protect you from the enemy because Romans 6 16 says we are slaves to who we obey when you have the breastplate of righteousness that means you are right with God you are doing things right and when you are doing things right that means you are not giving the devil a foothold when you give the devil a foothold then the devil can come in to your into your life so be wise matters Ephesians 4 verse 27 says do not give the devil a foothold when you put on the breastplate of righteousness that means you are right with god that is second weapon protective weapon against the devil sister genesis could you tell us which is the third weapon against the devil your feet fitted with the preparation of peace your feet hear the word your feet pre- fitted with the preparation of the gospel of peace that means no matter what you must have to stand your ground you know what the word says don't com- don't compromise you stand steady to the word of god your ground stands don't because under pressure you are you are a christian today tomorrow you are not under pressure you are willing to compromise and do something that is not according to the word of god no matter what you must have to stand your ground that is the third weapon against the devil that is a defensive weapon when you stand your ground it's hard for the enemy to get to you 
But when you don't stand your ground because out of pressure, you might decide to do something you are not meant to do because f- from fear, from fear, you can disobey the Lord. What is that Genesis? Could you tell us what, it, what is the next weapon, the fourth weapon, please? Shield of faith to quench the enemy's arrow. Hear the word shield of faith to quench the enemy's arrow. That means the, the devil, they are equipped as well. They have what they call an arrow. In the book of Ephesians 6, the arrow is described as a flaming arrow. That means that can be a spirit because sometimes you can be shot with an arrow of the enemy. It can shoot you with the spirit of anger before you realize you start getting angry. It can shoot you with the spirit of depression. You start getting depressed. It can shoot you with the spirit of lust. You start having lustful desire. But it's said for you to protect yourself against the enemy's arrow, you need to have the shield of faith. What is he talking about here? Romans 10 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing, by hearing, by the word of God. So you can protect yourself with the word of God. That is the protective weapon. The shield of faith. You have to believe. Faith comes by hearing. When you hear, even though you feel discouraged and you hear the word of God, you will revive and say, I will make it. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. So when you are down to protect yourself from the devil, you need to know the word. Because the devil can tell you, you are not going to make it. But you say the word of God says, I will make it. That is how, that is what is called the shield of faith. The shield protects. When soldiers, they have shield, shield can protect you from distance. So the word of God can protect you from this distance. And the word of God that can protect you is the word of God you know. So that is why it is good for you to read the word of God. Because sometimes you can be a single man or a single woman and you are in love with somebody and you are tempted to get into sexual immorality. But if you now know the word, the word of God says flee from sexual immorality. That is a shield that will protect you. You say the word of God says. Because you believe that word, that is the faith you have in that word. Then you will be protected. That is the fourth weapon to fight against the devil. Sister Genesis, could you tell us which is the fifth weapon? The element of salvation. Element of salvation. Because among soldiers, the head is a delicate part of the body. The head is where your program is. Let me use that term. The head is where you have your computer, your microchips. If the head, if the head goes, the body goes. All your feeling has to do with your head. It says you should have element of salvation that means for the uh, for the armor of god to work you have to be saved save romans 10 9 10 says if you confess with your mouth jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god has risen from the dead you will be saved when you decide to repent and change your ways and say now from today i've decided to make jesus my lord and my savior then you have now the element of salvation but you have to keep yourself under the grace of god by living like a christian that is how you get protected because you are under the grace of god you have the element of salvation covered you say you now are a believer that can protect your head so what christians are entitled to read then you can be entitled to read as well Sister Genesis, could you read and tell us the next um, weapon we need to fight our spiritual warfare? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, it's now offensive now. We've spoken about five weapons. Those five weapons, we are defensive, now offensive. You cannot keep defending yourself all the time against the devil. There's a time as well you have to learn to fight back. Sister Genesis, she read the word. She said... The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In the Greek says the sword of the spirit, which is the realm of God. To fight the devil, you need a word of God to fight the devil. But the word of God you need in fighting the devil is not just a word alone. Sometimes you need a word known as a rhema. A rhema is a word for you in a particular time for a particular purpose. That is a rhema word for you. So when you hear that word and you react... That is how you can strike the devil. And sometimes the word could be a word you don't want to hear. It could be a word, forgive your mom, or forgive your dad, forgive your brothers, forgive your enemy. And when you obey, you get your miracle. Sometimes the word could be f- abstain from sexual immorality. Stop drinking. Pay your tithe. Give an offering. Once you hear the word is a rima and you obey, you've struck the enemy. Maybe the enemy can be blocking your finances. But as far as you hear the word, the instruction, you take and do what the word of god says that is the rhema of god you obey the word of god 
you be, you be this, a specific instruction from God for you. Once you get that word and you put it into practice, you've, you've struck the enemy. The enemy will leave you alone. Could you read again and tell us um, which is um, the um, seventh weapon, Sister Genesis? A prayer always in the spirit. Here the word is said we have to pray always in the spirit. Just praying is not enough. We have to pray in the spirit means we have to pray from our inner person. That is praying in the spirit. It's not talking about praying in tongues. Now, if you read it, it says pray in all kinds of prayers and pray in the spirit. You have prayer comes in different version, but it has to be in the spirit. And for it to be in the spirit, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24 says, God is spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. A weapon to fight the devil as well can be prayers. But a prayer has to be a specific prayer in the spirit. Sometimes the prayer you even really need is to cry to the Lord and say, God, have mercy on me. Change me. Set me free from my evil ways. That can be a weapon as well. Or you can pray as well and say, God, I'm, I'm going through this problem. I can't sleep at night. I am depressed. Deliver me. And you cry out to the Lord. That is a weapon as well. As you cry out, the Lord, the Bible says, the hear of God is attentive to the cry of the righteous one. When you cry out and the Lord hears you and he sets you free, that is a weapon as well to fight the devil. Now, Sister Genesis, what is the last weapon? And pray always for the saints. You hear, hear what it says? Pray always for the saints. Saint. We should not be self-centered. Centered, we should pray for one another. The question is, who are the saints? The saints are believers. Pray for everyone. Pray for the, your archbishop. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your mom. Pray for your dad. Pray for your friends. Learn to pray for people. Let people's problem become your problem. We are our brother's keeper. We have discussed the eight weapons how to fight against the devil. Five weapons is defensive, while three is offensive. Sister Genesis, my wife to be, I thank you very much. And Sister Patiwe, I you thank you very much. much. You One very moment. We should know the word of God says, um, Uzziah 4, verse 6, is a lack of knowledge, my people perish. Before you fight a warfare, it's good to be aware who are you fighting against. There's a, there's a book um, written by the Archbishop. It is called, Be Wise, Evil Spirits Are Real. Hear the word, Be Wise, They Are Real. So if you read this book, they will give you an awareness of the power of darkness. This book is only 10 pounds. And you can read this book and read it and read it. You can, even, you can have the book for 5 years, 10 years. You can keep reading the book and, be out and have the knowledge of the power of darkness. The book is 10 pounds plus postage. Postage is 2 pounds. So what do you do if you want the book? All you have to do is to give us the ring. There's another book as well called effective prayers the book is 10 pound as well plus two pound for postage that is 12 pound 10 pound for the book two pounds for, po for postage just to pray is okay but you, you have to be effective we don't, should not pray in random this book will teach you how to be effect how to pray effectively as well and there's another book as well written by the archbishop this book is called this book is called Receiving Abundant Blessing. This book is only £4.99. Plus postage is £6.99. If you are interested in any of this book, you ring the ministry number. The number is um, 020-7358-0321. Zero two zero seven three five eight zero three zero. Ask for the bookshop, then the book will be sent to you. You get the book within few days. We have to be wise and study our Bible. God bless you. Thank you very much, Sister Genesis, and thank you very God much, Sister Patiwe. God bless you, too, man of God. <laughs> thank you.